I'm Olivia and I am the Witch of Wonderlust. Today it's really hot out. I'm drinking a Palmer. I made it with the Lavender Earl Grey Tea by Private Selection. All I did was cold brew it, add some lemonade, put it in a jar and add a lemon for aesthetic. I'm drinking out of a jar because that's what people in LA do. So I'm just trying to, you know, fit in with the crowd. If you like tea and you want to incorporate it into your magic, I actually wrote a 22 page zine all about incorporating tea into your practice. It says not for resale because this is just the proof that I had sent to me so that I made sure that everything looked okay. You can find it in the link in the description below. It's literally just a little tea book that I wrote all about how I use tea in my personal practice. So if that's something you're interested in, I will link that below. So today I'm really excited because I have stalked, for lack of a better word, <laughs> sounds so creepy. I have very closely kept tabs, no that's creepy too. I've admired from afar, there we go. I've admired from afar this company for a, a couple of years now and I'm really, really excited to say that I am partnering with them. The company that I partnered with today is The Witch's Box. The Witch's Box is probably one of my favorite witchy companies. The reason for this is because they do provide a subscription box every single month, amazing items. It's also very gender neutral because I know that there are a lot of witchy subscription boxes, but they tend to lean towards the feminine side. And this particular box is for all practitioners. It's for people who have been practicing their whole lives or people who have no idea where to start. I just, yeah, I'm getting excited. But essentially, they were kind enough to send me one of their boxes and I'm going to open that today. And I'm not sure if you can decide of what this box happened to be when I opened it due to the title of this video. Let's just get into the unboxing and then we'll meet back here so that I can talk your ear off all about defensive magic. Okay, I cannot tell you how excited I am <laughs> to finally be opening one of these boxes. Magic awaits. Oh, I'm so excited. This is like a vinyl sticker. I was not expecting that. Check this out. How gorgeous is this? Another vinyl sticker. I really don't want to rip this one. The packaging is too pretty. It's one of those things. The clearing the energy box, which is hilarious because it's been a lot of talk of cleansing, protection, things like that. So this is actually perfect that this is the box that I'm opening today. <laughs> Check out this tarot card. I don't know if this is from a particular set or if this is special to the box. That's really pretty. I want to say it's probably from a certain deck. So the Six of Swords, it's about transition. It's about leaving behind things that no longer serve you. So remember that box that we opened last Sunday was all about transitions. I think this is interesting, but this is a beautiful card. I don't know what deck this is from. If this is from a particular deck and you know and you know what deck it's from, I would love to know. So this is a grimoire page, clearing the energy. Some sacred waters. The sacred bell, which is broom. So we have some grimoire pages over here that I'll be adding. Just so happy with this already, and I, I haven't even gotten into like the good stuff. I feel like okay. Oh, this is fun. I just like these. These are gorgeous. These are probably gonna be some like fillings for poppets and spell dolls. Hint, hint, hint for future video coming up soon. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> Oh, this is really pretty. Oh, this is beautiful. I love the color. I mean, I love the colors of these and everything else too, but... Wow. Okay. So we're only like three items in and... So excited. Okay, what's this? Oh, some charcoal discs. Okay, so I guess I could use that as my cauldron. I don't actually have a cauldron. I use, uh, I use a teapot, <laughs> a cast iron teapot. 
That's a kind of a cauldron, right? What do we have? Oh my. Oh, it's not glass. I was wrong. <gasps> wow, look at this bell. Oh my gosh. So I'm assuming it goes with this. Let's see how it goes. <sighs> yeah, all right, that's on the altar space for sure. Oh my gosh, if this is tea, please be tea. No, it's smoke. <laughs> it's incense. Angelica, bay, frankincense, juniper berries, myrrh, orange, and peppermint. Just so y'all know, I do my nails specifically for these unboxing videos so that you don't have to look at my ugly ass hands <laughs> when they're not done. That's the only reason I do my nails. <laughs> oh, well, good job. Oh, that smells delightful though. All right, well, let's clean this up. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow, there's a lot of things in here. Okay, so what's, what is in here? Oh, it's the, the Redwell spring water. So instead of information cards, it seems that they provide full grimoire pages for each item in the box, which y'all know I love my grimoire, so. So then the next thing is, I'm just going to assume maybe there's a little mini broom in here. <laughs> this one is. Oh, this is white spring well water. So now we have red spring and white spring well water. Notes that these are not for consumption. I will not be consuming these just in case anybody's either worried or curious Ha ha What did I say? Look, oh my gosh, that is adorable. That's the cutest thing I've ever seen. I have a mini broom but it's one of those um, those cinnamon brooms which are actually pretty good for protection because you know cinnamon around in the fall that they sell. This is adorable. <laughs> I believe that's all that's in there. Just, I love these colors. I love it so much. I'm... <laughs> oh my gosh, I knew that I was going to enjoy this. I did, I knew it, I was ready, and... Oh my gosh, this is, this blew me away. I... I'm so excited for this. Okay. So that's all for the unboxing. Let's go back to my talking head, and I will give you more information on the box and what we are going to do with it. Do you see why I was admiring this company for so long? That... I... I... I love that box. That box... It was just really cool. So I thought that this video should be centered around defensive magic. I'm gonna be looking down. I've got my notes, so if I'm constantly looking down, that would be why. Just a really quick disclaimer. This is all of my personal experience. At no point am I telling you that I am an expert in any of this. Am I telling you that these are the only ways to do X, Y, and Z, but this is just what has worked for me, what I've learned throughout my practice, and I'm just hoping to give that information to you and hopefully help you find something that works best for you and your practice. Now that that's said, let's get into it. So, you got your notebook? You ready? So, first off, what is defensive magic? To me, something that keeps you clear of unwanted energy, keeps you safe and protected from any outside influences, ill-intended people or entities, or just unwanted or negative energy in general. It's basically just which street smarts. <laughs> you, you are out in the world mundanely and spiritually, and you should be protecting yourself against the possible harms of both of those sides. So that to me is what defensive magic is. I broke it down into three different parts. Defensive magic is like the umbrella of all of these things. So the first thing is cleansing, the second is protection, and the third is warding. And sometimes banishing, but that's that kind of goes in with cleansing. So let's start off with the first part is cleansing. Cleansing can be done in a lot of ways. You can use smoke, you can use sound, you can use cleansing crystals such as selenite, you can use water, visualization. These are just a few different ways of doing this. There are 
I'm sure plenty of other options as well. So cleansing is just a good way to clear any unwanted or negative energy or stale energies. Obviously, you know, you don't want negative energy. If there was just a big fight, you had some person that just was like oozing bad energy in your home or in your space or around you, you want to cleanse that from you, place or object. However, you can also have stale energy and stale energy is something that I feel like does have an influence and it's not necessarily negative, it's just stale. It's like meh. So say you go on a trip for about two weeks and you come back and you know that feeling where you come back and it's just still. So basically it's like energy dust. It's like energy dust. It just settles and it's just accumulating and it's not constantly having a flow, which is why opening windows and cleansing and walking around or playing music, something to stir up those vibrations and not let it just accumulate and settle. I kind of go more into this in one of my other videos, Are You Hexed Part 2? So I'll link it somewhere, I'm assuming up here, and you can check that out as well. Cleansing and banishing are a lot of the time used interchangeably. To me, cleansing is just clearing out or moving around stale energy and bringing in new energy, whereas banishing is pushing out a certain entity or even sometimes a person. Again, you can use them interchangeably. This is just how I view these particular terms. Me, personally, I like to use this particular mixture of half parts water, half part white vinegar, and a little bit of rosemary. You can also use rosemary oil, but that's totally up to you, and I have heard of some people adding sea salt, but just be mindful if you are actually using this spray or this mixture on furniture, sea salt might have a bad effect on certain surfaces, so just keep that in mind if you decide to add salt to your mixture. I actually use this for both mundane and spiritual cleansing at the same time. I'm busy, I, I have a lot of things to do. The reason I like using white vinegar and rosemary is because white vinegar is really good for banishing and cleansing, and for some reason spirits don't like vinegar. I'm not sure why, they just don't. And then rosemary is really good for protection and bringing in positive energy. You can also use things like lavender too. I just personally really hate the smell of lavender, so that's, <laughs> I like rosemary better. If using sage, because this is a very common way to smoke cleanse is using sage. I personally don't like the smell of sage or using sage really at all in my practice, but if that is something that you use, just keep in mind that sage, a cleanser of all energy, not just negative energy, it cleanses both negative and positive, so it literally just wipes out everything. So you want to use something after using the sage to bring in the wanted energy. A lot of the time people use things like sweetgrass or cedar or rosemary, or you can even use a spray. So. Anything like that works, but again, I don't usually use or ever use sage in my practice. I also don't smoke cleanse super often. Animals and smoke cleansing don't really go hand in hand. So if you do have a furry, feathered, or scaled friend, just make sure that they're in the other room, in a well-ventilated room when you do your smoke cleansing and bring them back only after all of your smoke cleansing has completely left the room because their lungs are a lot more sensitive than ours. So just keep that in mind, pet safety. <laughs> Cleansing of the body can be done in also a bunch of different ways. You can use smoke, you can use visualization, and there's a lot of different ways to do this in baths or showers. You can use things like tea baths or just throwing in safe herbs in your bath. Going back to vinegar because I love vinegar. It's those Filipino roots. <laughs> that you can use apple cider vinegar for your body. So white vinegar for the cleaning and the apple cider vinegar for your body cleansing. Hair rinses, you can use a teaspoon or two to put it in a glass of water, or I used to use it in fruity teas. Put a cup or two in your bath and soak, and that's actually very good for people for vaginas, so just keep that in mind as well. If you're cleansing using a shower, you can absolutely do that, and you can actually just use a bar of soap or a certain soap that you've created. Um, I actually just buy my bar of soap at the grocery store and a lot of the time they are peppermint infused, lavender infused, I don't use a lavender, but there's almond or rosemary or rose and there's all these different things available on the market so you can actually just activate your soap for a cleansing purpose and just use that in the shower. So once you've cleansed yourself, your space, your tools, whatever you feel you need to cleanse, the next thing is protection because now that you've cleansed, 
you did all this work to, to make it all squeaky clean spiritually, <laughs> and you want to make sure that it stays that way. Protection can be done in a lot of different ways. So you can do certain spells, you can do tinctures. I made a tea. You can use visualization or wear certain crystals and activate those crystals for that. Even if it's not a crystal, you can use a certain piece of jewelry or after you do a cleansing bath or shower, you can also activate something else to protect yourself. As for spaces, um, a lot of people like to make protection powders or you can use protection oils. You can use candles and you'll see that I actually set up little tea-like candles and just a small bed of salt and I'll change out the bed of salt every so often just because I will use the salt in a way of absorbing any negative energy, the light of the candle that attracts any of the negative energy, and I will use those in four corners of my home. Because the white vinegar and the rosemary mixture is both cleansing and protecting, I do both at the same time. I really like to be really efficient in these things. <laughs> and I will go around and wash all of the door frames and all of the window frames and saying some kind of blessing or prayer or whatever you feel works for you. You can also do the same thing with smoke cleansing. So if you do prefer to smoke cleanse, then I would go around all of the door frames and all of the windows with your smoke and making sure that you are visualizing that protective barrier coming up. Another thing you can also use is Four Thieves Vinegar. This is really good for protection, even eating this, depending on how you make it. And you can actually use this to protect against sickness in your home. There's so many different recipes for Four Thieves Vinegar on the internet, so you can go ahead and find one that you like yourself. Some people will light candles and use candles that they have anointed in the oils or dressed in the certain protective herbs or powders. Now the last step is warding. So again, people tend to use these interchangeably and that's fine, but in my personal experience, protection is more about putting up the barriers and putting up the walls, whereas a ward is more of like a go away sign. So when it comes down to warding your space, a lot of people will use protective symbols or statues in their home. Things like the evil eye amulet, crosses, pentacles, pentagrams, statues of deities or gods or protective figures of any sort. You can use things like wind chimes or planting rosemary or lavender at the front of your doors. Garlic and onions are really good for protection and warding off evil. There are a lot, a lot, a lot of different ways to ward your space. I would highly suggest whenever you do a full cleansing to follow through in all of these because you cleanse the place, but if you don't protect it, then all of your cleansing just goes to waste anyways. First cleanse, then protect, and then ward. Try a lot of these different things out. Maybe you like using sprays, maybe you like using smoke, maybe you like visualizing and just meditating and cleansing your space or an object or a person or your person. But that's all for this video. I feel like I did pretty good at keeping it in a good quick bullet point version. There are grimoire pages available for you. It's all linked below. You do have to sign up to be a member in the Wonderlust community and on the forms of the website in order to get access to the grimoire pages, but it's free, so don't worry about that. And once you sign up, it should send you an email to give you a coupon code that allows you to get your first five grimoire pages for free. You will have access to the grimoire pages for the protection powder, the four thieves vinegar, simple protection spells, and different cleansing methods, as well as the just some bullet points that I covered in this particular video. I wanna thank you again to the Witch's Box for sending me that box. I was ecstatic. <laughs> and so I cannot wait to open more. I am so excited, it's like Christmas. But hopefully you guys also enjoyed that and I will leave all of their information in the link below if you want to check out this wonderful company and all of the things that they offer. And other than that, as always, I will see you next week. Best of luck, be kind to each other, and may your gods treat you as you've treated others. Bye.